Good morning, Northeast Ohio, and welcome finally to May, the month where it is said all things seem possible. That's at least the way those running for presidency the next 31. The news of the last week was a deal between John Kasich and Ted Cruz, where Kasich doesn't campaign in Indiana and Cruz doesn't campaign in Oregon or New Mexico. In Indiana, though, Kasich picked up the endorsement on Friday of the state's largest newspaper, while in Oregon, where he was campaigning last week, he's running third in the polls. Well, you know, I have the lowest name ID here in Oregon. People don't know me yet. I mean, I think we may be gaining a little bit on that, but I'm still not very well known. And for those that follow it, I think, you know, we hear that consistently. But, you know, look, I've been out spent 50 to 1. I had zero name ID when I started, and it's a, it's a climb up Mount Hood. You guys in a snowstorm. Local reference is always good. Donald Trump, meanwhile, riding the high of his sweep last week at the five primary states that voted. Trump has enjoyed the support of many different people over the past couple of months, including a Cleveland Heights pastor, Reverend Daryl Scott. This week, our Danita Harris sat down to talk with Scott about his Donald backing decision. He's undoubtedly this. controversial. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some I assume are good people. There was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. This guy started screaming by himself, and they did, I don't know, rough up? He should have been, maybe he should have been roughed up. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. And he's the man who believes Trump should be our next president. And I believe that Donald Trump is our change agent. If you're in agreement with me, somebody shout amen. Pastor Darrell Scott supports billionaire businessman Donald Trump's run for the White House with no apologies. You are an African-American man and a pastor supporting yes. a candidate that that's, a, white. that's white and a lot of African-Americans have a problem with. What type of backlash have you received? First of all, I'm not the one. They call me Uncle Tom, but everybody that knows me knows better than that a sellout, an Uncle Tom, a coon. All of the racism that I receive has been from black people. I'm and why do you think that is? Because they're black people. <laughs> Explain that, Pastor. Explain that. And because I'm not in the Democratic camp, for, one, for some reason they think all blacks automatically are supposed to vote Democrat. And, uh, you know, they, they get upset uh, because of their lack of knowledge. And their assumption that Scott is getting paid. Is he paying you? And no. You, and you said? Absolutely not. Have you been promised anything from the Absolutely Trump administration? Absolutely not. If he gets into the White House? I, I don't want anything. I don't want a job. Scott, along with his wife, are pastors of New Spirit Revival Center in Cleveland Heights. Under the Internal Revenue Code, churches are considered to be 501c3 organizations and are prohibited from directly or indirectly participating in or intervening in any political campaign on behalf of any candidate for elective public office. And when I asked Scott about this possible conflict, how can he be a pastor and let Trump care? He can take his five or one. They can't take anything. Try and take it and see what happens. It's nothing illegal about it. Uh, people don't even, you know what's killing the, the, the man on the street that, that doesn't even know what a 501c3 is. All of a sudden is saying, well, he, he can't do that. Yes, I can. Because I don't endorse him on behalf of my church. As a private citizen, I still have rights as an American citizen. I can endorse who I want to endorse. Scott is a part of a newly formed group of Donald Trump minority and women voters, the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. They don't believe he is bigoted and are serving as his eyes and ears on the ground. They met briefly with Trump at Trump Tower in Manhattan last week. We speak to him about a lot of the issues concerning the black community. We've spoken to him about jobs, job creation, urban revitalization, uh, education, crime. I mean, we've had some very, very productive talks with him, and he has plans. You believe he will have plans to help the people that you serve? Yeah, I know it. Whenever the devil attacks you. And his congregation knows that this is not his first interaction with Trump. But do all of his members agree with his personal endorsement of Mr. Trump? If there are those that are disgruntled, then they didn't know me, then, you know, they have to make their own decisions. But nobody can say that Daryl Scott asked me to vote for Donald Trump. There's nobody on the face of the planet Earth can say that because I've never said that to anybody. And even with comments like this. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. Pastor Scott says. Donald Trump is not arrogant. Donald Trump is actually 
a humble, down-to-earth guy. He's not misogynistic, he's not a racist, he's not xenophobic. Oh, what he is is the GOP frontrunner, whether or not he becomes the nominee or we head to a contested convention really won't be known until June 7th. That's when the last of the states to vote vote, including California, the biggie and all this 172 delegates. By that point, though, Cleveland's already going to begin to start looking like a convention city. The banners will likely be going up around town, welcoming the first of the 50,000 visitors to Cleveland. The Rock Inspire convention logo will be popping up everywhere as well, maybe even in your front yard. We're going to have uh, things for sale, um, uh, uh, merchandise, so people in their homes and their businesses can welcome people to the RNC, whether it's flags or window clings or, or, uh, uh, or stickers or, or things like that, that if they just want to show their support, they'll be able to go online and order those things. And Gilbert says the items will essentially be priced at cost. We'll let you know when they go on sale. Only five states to vote in the month of May, including Indiana. That's the biggest of them. On Tuesday, 57 delegates at stake. That should give us a clearer picture of how this road to Cleveland is shaping up. With Democracy 2016, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.